All right there, my name's Chris Dangerfield. You know what really pisses me off about this recent internet squeeze, this wave of censorship from, from Google, Apple, YouTube, etc. And, and those on the street that are doing the same thing at their level. The, the, the arrogance of these people. The idea that they know better, that they can choose what they hear, which is only right and fair, but they also want to choose what you hear. Not just what you say, but what you hear. Bear that in mind when considering free speech. It's not only what you're allowed to say, but it's, allowed what, it's about what you're allowed to hear. And there's other people making decisions about that. Freedom of speech doesn't exist in a society as an a priori situation. It's something that's fought for, something that's defended, something that is required in the debate that is society, in, in the conversation that is civilization. It's a requirement for the freedom of that society. You can measure the freedom of any given society by measuring the freedom of speech of that society. You know, it's, it's a one-to-one it's a -one ratio. Without one, you don't get the other. And the arrogance of these people smashing things up, smashing people up, silencing ideas, pro-censorship, because they know what's better. You know, I think they forget what luxurious times they live in. I mean, if you're watching this now, you're sitting in front of a computer, or you've got this little miracle in your hand. <laughs> I was reading the, um, I was reading the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy a couple of months ago. My Kindle, can't remember what one it is, one of the a Kindle Super White or something. And what, it, if you don't know, a Kindle is like a, a phone, and uh, it's a, and you read books and you can go on the internet. And <laughs> Yeah, I, and, it, and there's a bit where it's explaining what the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is. And he's saying, as, as I'm reading it, it says it's a little handheld book where you can flick through different pages of, of this massive library and get explanation. It's explaining itself. <laughs> and of course, that was written before the Internet, certainly written before the handheld Kindles. And I was thinking, what a time, what, a, what an amazing thing this is. So you're there, you're there with your, your Hitchhiker's Guide to, the, uh, to Earth. <laughs> it's still pretty good. Or you're at your computer, you're in a house, there's food in the fridge, there's a bathroom, there's, there's sanitation, there's water literally on tap. I imagine you're quite warm, or you're a student. Unlucky, it gets better. <laughs> I mean... These are luxurious surroundings. Sure, you'd like a palace. Sure, you'd like a castle on a hill. Yeah, everyone wants something better. That's all right. That's normal. But what you've got is not that bad. You live in a relatively free society. The fact that you're watching this would suggest you live in a, an exceptionally free society. Certainly, if you look around the globe, have a look around. Go and, go and do some research on the world as it stands and the freedom of each given society. And work out where you live. Work out where that is on that chart. My guess is it's going to be near the top. It's going to be in the top three. Historically, it gets even worse. Go on, go back in time. Take a few steps. To get freedom, anything like what we've got now, you have to probably go pre-civilization. You know, it's a history of tyranny. It's a history where speech was controlled. And so people were controlled. Ideas were controlled. Progress was controlled. Moral progress was controlled. And it's, it's flimsy. It's delicate. And it should be cherished. I walked home from Bar Italia. I live in one of the greatest cities in the world. London. Fantastic place. Amazing. Step back a little bit, back from, step back from where you live. 
wherever it is and have a look at it have a look what's going on there you know the communications media around here the 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 transport system above ground underground in the sky pedestrian incredible moving millions and millions of people around all day every day being fed being entertained having fun meeting people the amount of leisure time we've got at the moment is incredible you're doing it now you're sat on your ass watching a video unless you're at work and if you are at work what an amazing job that is <laughs> you get to watch videos at work have a look around the world have a look at history how many people do you think can do this kind of stuff the amount of leisure time we've got we live in a fantastic fantastic culture we have excellent cultures you're not meant to say that it's not right it's politically incorrect exceptionalism i think they call it one there some cultures you can't say that culture is better than that culture you, you're not allowed to say that they're just different yeah they are just different and some are better than others they are for sure stupid So step back and have a look at what you've got. Have a look at the incredible potential. You know, I haven't been involved in wars. I haven't been bombed. I haven't had to go and fight. I haven't had to see my children go and fight. My parents had to see their son go and fight. I've got to, I, I, I got to go to university. I got to learn like many of you did. You, you know, you, you've got access, you're sitting at a computer, it gives you access to the history of ideas. Incredible. What a time to be alive, and yet these cunts are complaining. They are, they are fueling censorship. Why? Because two men had a swastika flag in Charlottesville. Because <laughs> there's some portraits of white people in a Scottish gallery from 200 years ago. Are you really complaining about that? Because people who hold guns up at the police or resist arrest end up getting shot. What? These are the dragons you're slaying from this palace in which you live. And what, what, what really does me about it is not only are they handing this censorship over to government <laughs> and corporations you know it's part of the same game but this 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 freedom we enjoy this luxury we are in this conversation that defines our civilization this is all at risk and it, that, that flimsy, delicate nature of the freedom of speech I talked about, it's so, it's so, so easy to lose that, to hide it, to, to watch it disappear, to crush it. We are an inch away from tyranny. We are an inch away from slavery. We are an inch away from war. You know... Read Solzhenitsyn's, the, the, <laughs> I can never pronounce it, Solzhenitsyn, read the Gulag Archipelago, see what you and me are capable of, see what your average human is capable of. You know, we're wonderful, and we're fucking awful. But freedom, freedom does wonders for humanity. It allows us to focus on what's good about us. It's only when you start putting people in boxes. It's only when you start caging people up. It's only when you start scaring people. It's only when you start restricting freedoms that that dark side starts coming out. And we are an inch away from that. It's just around the corner. Gratitude is what it comes back to. Have some fucking gratitude. How 
dare you go and smash things up because you don't like what some lecturer says. How dare you? Your arrogance sickens me. Why the fuck do you think you get to choose what I get to listen to? Anyone. Why would anyone think they had that right over another human? Because that conversation that defines our civilization, that debate that defines our ability to progress morally, once that freedom is restricted, once that freedom of expression, once that free speech is restricted and put in the hands of centralised power, such as government, such as media, or such as that that funds them both, the corporations, it's no longer a debate. It's no longer a conversation. It's something quite different. Have you ever seen a conversation take a turn for the worst. You're in a room of five or six people, you're chatting away, and then someone makes a threat out of the blue. You're just talking in a bar or something, we've all been there, and suddenly someone says, you wanna watch your fucking mouth? That feeling, everyone in the room is like, even if you're not the person being threatened, you feel it, because something's changed. The conversation has changed, the rules of, engagement have changed we're no longer going to speak about this because violence the threat of violence has been brought into the situation so now that person keeps it down if they don't they fight that's the other option fight or okay won't say that and everyone else in that circle knows they're not to say that as well. They're not, they're not to go down that route that caused this person to make a threat. How does that conversation feel after that? Honest? Truthful? Anyone learning? Or is everyone trying to just get the fuck out of there, away from that lunatic and the horrific situation that he caused? by putting violence in front of communication, by putting a threat over the sharing of ideas.